Right, the first story and the big story that we're discussing today is the latest as far as the G20 summit is concerned. It's underway in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro. Prime Minister Modi has also held uh, several key uh, bilaterals that have taken place uh, today. In fact, uh, India, US, China and France were among the top leaders at the G20. And leaders uh, discussed trade, climate change uh, and international security as the primary areas of focus. As far as India is concerned, its message was one earth, one family and one future. Very clearly, that's what it focused on. And Prime Minister Modi urged the G20 members to prioritize the challenges that the global south countries face. He also said that as far as global conflicts are concerned, climate challenges are concerned, they are felt most acutely by the countries of global south. And as I said, uh, this is uh, at the G20, at the sidelines of the G20, Prime Minister Modi also held talks uh, with his Italian counterpart, uh, as well as the UK counterpart, and also the French President uh, Macron as well. All right, uh, let's uh, get in uh, Patsy of Voice of America to really fill us in in terms of uh, what all happened today at uh, the G20, especially given the fact that the communique focused on comprehensive ceasefires in both Gaza and Lebanon. But the question really is, is it enough? Hi there. Hi. Sorry. Yes, uh, here I am in Rio de, de Janeiro where the leaders are just starting to begin their day. And you mentioned the final communique. This is the leader's statement that came out early last night, early this morning in, in Rio, Tuesday. Um, and on Ukraine, it really is not the kind of strong statement that at least from U.S. and Western perspective wants. So this is very similar to the summit statement in New Delhi at the G20 uh, that India hosted last year. Uh, it highlights the Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, the human suffering, as well as the negative impact of the war on global uh, energy and food security, on global inflation, and so on. But there is absolutely no condemnation of Russia. Uh, this is, of course, similar to New Delhi, but very different than uh, in Bali, G20 Bali 2022, where there was no leaders communicate on this issue precisely because of divisions between the G7 leaders and the rest of the G20. Now, on Gaza, the statement highlights similar suffering uh, by the Palestinians uh, and the negative impact of the war and supported a comprehensive ceasefire in Gaza and in Lebanon. Uh, it also affirmed Palestinian rights to self-determination and a pathway towards a two-state solution. What I found notable about this statement on Gaza is that there is no mention of Israel's right to self-defense, which is something that the U.S. has always pushed for in various global forums. So overall, I would say that, you know, the G20 is, of course, made up not only of U.S. and Western allies in the G7, but also Russia and China as well as the countries of the global south. So it's a very diverse group. It's no wonder that these kinds of uh, leader statements really just underlines, you know, right. the lowest hanging fruit and the, uh, the lowest common denominator. But from U.S. and Western perspective, this is not a statement that prioritizes their, pri uh, their issues on Ukraine, on Gaza. It's not uh, highlighted under their global conflict priorities. All right, uh, let's leave it there, Patsy. Thanks much for breaking that down for us. Uh, Patsy joining us live from Rio de Janeiro.